Hey Rockhounds, um, rather a dreary day here in Milverton. Um, been raining and drizzling most of the day. I've been in the house. Uh, this is my new study. I don't know what you can see of it behind me, but this is where I will basically sit and compose my my videos uh, of rock hounding. I'll probably be heading off tomorrow for a little bit of a local trip, but um, today I really want to talk about bis bismuth or bismuthonite. Uh, depending which of the two uh, chemical forms we're talking about here. But one of my favorite, favorite weird man, person, I should say, person-made uh, crystals. So I've got an example right here, which I picked up at the recent Bancroft Jamboree. Uh, you'll notice it's a really odd-looking shape. And this is because it's what they call a hopper crystal. Now, a hopper crystal is a crystal that glow, grows faster on its outer edges than in its center. So if you zero down to the molecular level and you're looking at a, a starting point for the crystal where it's growing, say this is the seed that the crystal is growing from, all along the edges there, because of their greater attraction to molecules, the electrical attraction, starts to grow fast. It starts growing outwards and outwards and outwards, so it expands outwards as it grows. The inside remains hollow. And so, basically stepped up all around the seed, it grows outwards quickly, leaving this really weird step construction shape. And we're specializing here in what is it? Bismuth Smith. Bismuth Smith. Yep, so you have different metal metal workers like goldsmiths and silversmiths uh -huh. and bismuth smith. Oh wow. And you have different elements on the periodic table. Number uh -huh. 83 is bismuth. It's a uh -huh. little over eight times rarer than silver. And you know when you see oil on water it produces yeah. rainbows similar uh -huh. to this? Yeah. It happens because a layer of oil is just thin enough that it uh -huh. actually interferes with the light wave itself, sure. reflecting it back into its different colors. Depending on the diameter itself, it's called thin film interference. The metal's rust is actually what does this. This is beautiful stuff. Look at this. I mean, this yeah. is just we phenomenal. We, yeah. give it, we give it a seeding point, and it actually super cools like water does. Okay. And it, it'll go below the temperature it's supposed to be solid at. Okay. And then we give it a seeding point, and then they grow. Wow, they're they beautiful. Up. Yeah. When we, they, when we pull them out. What, what kind of temperatures are we talking here? Um, just 550 Fahrenheit, 220 okay. Celsius. It's just incredibly hard to get the crystals to grow without forming crystals in other places. Mm -hmm. So to get the large crystals, you can only have them seed in one space. Okay. So when we do the cast, even the inside of these have a crystal structure. It doesn't matter the metal sure. itself. Okay. It has a crystal structure to it. And uh -huh. it's just to prevent the crystals from growing causes the larger crystals. Okay. And the casts have to be hollow. Bismuth actually expands as it cools. So the, everybody's told in the science class that water is the only thing that expands when uh -huh. it cools. Actually, bismuth is. Okay. So there's more than one thing when it comes to that. Expands as it cools. Yep. Bismuth, you can make it yourself. Uh, these particular hopper crystals, as they call them. Uh, you can buy the, the raw bismuth uh, online. Uh, obviously, the more you buy, the, the cheaper it is. So. Uh, if you're buying a thousand pounds, we're talking five ninety nine a pound. Um, if you're buying uh, thirty, I think it's thirty four pounds. It's two hundred and ninety eight dollars. That's by prices right now, two thousand and nineteen. So you can order this stuff offline. And the way you'd actually grow a, a crystal, I mean, it has a quite a low melting point. Heat it up in a pan, preferably a deep pan, because the deeper the pan, the bigger the crystal you can grow and then you let it cool very slowly. If you let it cool quickly, no good, you'll get, uh, you'll get no crystals. Um, also, before you let it cool, you've got to scoop up, scoop off the impurities from the top of the pan, and then as it cools, the crystal will grow from the surface. Um, it will go, grow downwards in the pan or the pot that you're using to melt it. Let it grow slowly, and eventually at a certain point, you want to pour off the excess uh, molten liquid and you're left with the crystals. They also say that you want to keep them moving ever so slightly and definitely do not let them touch either the bottom of the pan or the side of the pan. That's you. I, th yeah. I thought it was a German. Uh... It was a German gentleman and the yeah. German gentleman, I don't know what happened to him. Okay. When it comes to that, he's over the last, I'd say, four or five years, I haven't heard much about him. I know that there's a presence in Tucson with him. Uh -huh. but beyond that, I don't know. I, he has no market online currently. These are, to me, they, they look like these Mayan temples, these yep. well, What's really things, interesting, you know? you know when you have crystal structures, they, uh -huh. they're always, they're, when you look at a quartz crystal, it's sure. always the same. Yeah. 
Well, with bismuth, it's I gotta find a good piece to show you this. Okay, you can see this point here uh -huh. where it comes, and you have the it's I can't remember the angles. I think 135, 135, and 90 something. Okay. Yeah. If I actually turn this 90 degrees, it repeats itself. And then if I turn oh, it 90 wow. degrees again, it repeats itself again. So how, did, how did you get into this kind of stuff? Like, is I it was challenged by a jewelry shop going uh -huh. back, I'd say, four years ago. Uh -huh. And they explained that the bismuth market was at about a dollar a gram. And right. the actual ingot costs a fair bit less. Sure. And I came in, and what happened with the, the bismuth itself was I crashed the market. So I started producing it for about a half of what even the biggest wholesalers were selling it. Sure. And they went from there. And the invention for the colors here were uh -huh. originally to produce single color crystals. So okay. when you have a lot of the bismuth and it's hot enough, it produces the rainbows. But for the individual colors, we wanted to produce crystals that were just green or just pink or just gold or just blue. Uh -huh. Once we figured that out, I always had the same, the same question all the time. For those that are not in the gem and mineral industry that have no appreciation for crystals, uh -huh. like, what do you do with them? So my answer to that was start making other things out of yeah. it. And that's where everything came from from there. Oh, they're beautiful. So often on our channel uh, and in my books, um, we've talking, talked about the industrial application of the various um, minerals or metals that we're looking at. Uh, you know, recently we've done a lot of talking about coltan and tantalum and niobium as its spin-offs. We've talked about rare earth, the neodymium that we're finding in the local appetite, you know, Bear Lake, uh, the Gibson property being good examples. So bismuth, hey, what's, what's the purpose for bismuth? I guess China's the biggest producer by far. And one of the things, as I, as I already mentioned, is that bismuth uh, or expands as it cools. So when we're talking about metals that contract, bismuth is a good counter to that situation in the form of an alloy. Uh, here's another one. Um, hey, what do we... Pepto-bismol, right? It says right here, it says bismuth, subsilicate liquid. So obviously for relief of heartburns, indigestion, upsets, stomach, nausea, diarrhea. So yeah, bismuth, quite beautifully displayed in crystals made by people. One of the cool things about the gem is all the oddities that you'll find, meteorite fragments, they say from Argentina. Two bucks a carat, Zambian tourmalines. Really beautiful. If I still had money, this would be the deal. Brazilian tourmaline, $35 for that. Some really good stuff. $85 for that. Got a crystal in itself with crystals within it. See, the problem here is it's either got a really nice form or it's got a nice transparency in color. There's, you never get the two together. Or if you do, they're very small. So at $3 though, you can't go wrong. I don't like that one so much. But I'm going to definitely get this one. Uh, These are almondine garnets. They're dead. And this is what they call Limnite Devil's Dice. Uh, how much for this? Pseudomorph for pyrite, as they say. It comes like that. Yep. Looks like a really beautiful tremolite crystal there. Where, where, where did you find it? I found it on Grace Lake Road. Grace Lake Road, eh? Yeah. Oh two, no! Two, two uh, new rock hounds that are obviously having some real good success. What is it you found? I'm not <laughs> saying where. What, what did you just recently find? Uh, we found some dobsides, some quartz, you know, full, full quartz points and crystals um, in the calcite bed. The brown dobside, like you said. Um, some tremolite, some actinolite. But yeah, we can't tell you where. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you.